Hello, friends. Today, we embark on a profound journey into the philosophical realm of Siddhartha Gautama Buddha. Born in the 6th century BCE in ancient India, Siddhartha's life and teachings have left an indelible mark on the understanding of human existence. To comprehend his philosophy, we must first navigate the historical and cultural context in which he lived. Siddhartha, later known as the Buddha, was born into a life of luxury as a prince. However, his encounters with the realities of suffering, old age, and death prompted him to renounce his princely life in pursuit of enlightenment. His quest led him to the revelation of the Four Noble Truths, foundational to understanding his philosophy. Our journey today involves unpacking these truths and delving into the Eightfold Path, a guide to ethical and mental development. Let us navigate the intellectual landscapes of ancient India and unlock the wisdom embedded in Buddha's teachings. Fundamental Concepts of Buddhism Let us dive into the fundamental concepts that underpin Buddha's philosophy, starting with the Four Noble Truths. 1. Suffering, Dukkha. Our journey begins with the recognition of Dukkha, often translated as suffering. Buddha identified this pervasive aspect of human existence, the dissatisfaction, discontent, and the inherent unsatisfactory nature of life. 2. Cause of Suffering, Samudaya. Moving forward, we explore Samudaya, the cause of suffering. Buddha teaches us to investigate the roots of our discontent, delving into craving and attachment as the origins of suffering. 3. Cessation of suffering. Niroda. The path to liberation lies in understanding Niroda, the cessation of suffering. By breaking the cycle of craving and attachment, one can attain a state of peace and freedom from suffering. 4. Path to the Cessation of Suffering, Magga. Finally, we navigate Magga the Eightfold Path. This path, characterized by ethical and mental development, is the practical guide to achieving Niroda. The Eightfold Path encompasses right understanding, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Now, let's explore the Eightfold Path in more detail understanding how each element contributes to the alleviation of suffering and the attainment of enlightenment. 1. Right understanding. The journey begins with cultivating wisdom and discernment. Right understanding involves seeing the world as it truly is, understanding the nature of suffering, and recognizing the impermanence of all things. 2. Right intention. Ethical commitment is paramount. Right intention encourages us to align our actions with positive and compassionate motivations fostering a commitment to non-harm and goodwill. 3. Right speech. Words hold immense power. Right speech emphasizes truthfulness, mindfulness, and the avoidance of harmful or divisive language. It guides us to communicate in ways that promote understanding and harmony. 4. Right action. Ethical conduct extends beyond speech to encompass our actions. Right action emphasizes moral behavior, urging us to act in ways that promote well-being and prevent harm to ourselves and others. 5. Right Livelihood Our livelihood should align with ethical principles. Right livelihood guides us to choose occupations that do not harm others and contribute positively to society. 6. Right Effort Cultivating positive qualities requires effort. Right effort encourages the development of wholesome mental states and the eradication of harmful ones, fostering a balanced and harmonious mind. 7. Right Mindfulness Present moment awareness is central to the path. Right mindfulness involves being fully present in each moment, observing our thoughts and actions, without attachment or aversion. 8. Right concentration. The path culminates in mental focus and clarity. Right concentration involves the development of deep concentration through meditation, leading to a profound understanding of the nature of reality. By integrating these eight aspects into our lives, we can embark on a transformative journey toward enlightenment. Now, let's explore how these principles can be practically applied in our daily lives, starting with the cultivation of right understanding, moving beyond the foundational concepts of the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. Let us explore the profound notion of dependent origination. Dependent origination, or Pratijasamatpada, is a key concept in Buddhist philosophy. It elucidates the interdependent nature of all phenomena. According to this concept, everything arises in dependence on multiple causes and conditions. Nothing exists in isolation. Everything is interconnected. To illustrate, 
consider a flower. Its existence is contingent on various factors such as sunlight, water, soil, and nutrients. Remove one element, and the flower's existence is compromised. Similarly, in our lives, our experiences, actions, and emotions are interconnected, forming a web of causation. Dependent origination is intricately tied to the concept of karma, the law of cause and effect. Our actions, thoughts, and intentions create a ripple effect that shapes our present and future experiences. For instance, if we cultivate positive thoughts and engage in compassionate actions, we contribute to the well-being of ourselves and others. Conversely, negative thoughts and harmful actions perpetuate a cycle of suffering. Understanding dependent origination and comma encourages us to be mindful of our actions, fostering a sense of responsibility for the interconnected web of existence. This awareness forms a crucial aspect of Buddha's teachings on the nature of reality. Let us now delve into the concept of impermanence, anicca, a cornerstone of Buddhist philosophy that elucidates the transient nature of all phenomena. Impermanence teaches us that everything is in a constant state of flux. Nothing in the material or mental realms is permanent or unchanging, whether it be the seasons, our thoughts, or the structure of a mountain, all things arise, exist for a time, and then cease to be. To grasp the essence of impermanence, reflect on the changing nature of emotions, joy, sorrow, and even indifference arise and pass away. By recognizing impermanence, we can develop a more balanced and equanimous perspective, freeing ourselves from attachment to fleeting experiences. Consider the changing phases of the moon, the aging process of a tree, or the impermanence of relationships. These examples mirror the impermanent nature of all existence, even in our own lives, career paths, relationships, and personal circumstances undergo continuous change. Philosophically, impermanence invites us to cultivate acceptance and resilience in the face of life's inevitable changes. By acknowledging impermanence, we can release attachments and live more fully in the present moment, recognizing the beauty inherent in the transience of all things. Let us now explore the profound concept of no-self, anatta a fundamental tenet in Buddhist philosophy challenging the conventional notion of a permanent, unchanging self. Anatta asserts that there is no permanent, unchanging self or soul. Instead, our sense of self is a dynamic and ever-changing interplay of mind and body. By understanding that our identity is not fixed, we can liberate ourselves from the illusion of a permanent self. To illustrate, consider a river. It may appear constant, but its composition of water molecules is in constant flux. Similarly, our identities are a continuous flow of thoughts, emotions, and experiences, constantly changing. The concept of no self has practical implications for alleviating suffering. Attachment to a fixed sense of self can lead to clinging, craving, and suffering. By recognizing the fluid nature of selfhood, we can navigate life with greater flexibility and acceptance. For example, in times of hardship, Understanding that the challenges we face do not define us eternally can offer solace. It allows us to approach difficulties with a sense of impermanence, knowing that, like all things, they too shall pass. No self challenges us to perceive the interconnected and impermanent nature of our existence, fostering a profound shift in our relationship with the self and the world around us. Moving forward, let's explore the transformative practice of mindfulness meditation a practical application of Buddha's philosophy in cultivating awareness and mental clarity. Mindfulness, or sati in Pali, is the art of being fully present in the current moment, without judgment or attachment. This practice is deeply rooted in the teachings of Buddha and serves as a gateway to developing a focused and tranquil mind. In the hustle and bustle of modern life, cultivating mindfulness can bring about a profound shift in our experience by being fully aware of our thoughts, emotions, and sensations, we can break free from the autopilot mode and engage with life more intentionally. Mindfulness meditation involves various techniques to anchor our attention to the present moment. This could include focused breath awareness, body scan, or mindful walking. By consistently practicing these techniques, individuals can experience a range of benefits. 1. Stress Reduction Mindfulness meditation has been shown to alleviate stress by promoting relaxation and reducing the impact of stressors. 2. Improved concentration. Regular practice enhances cognitive focus and concentration, enabling individuals to engage more deeply in tasks. 3. Emotional regulation. 
Mindfulness allows individuals to observe and understand their emotions without being overwhelmed, fostering emotional resilience. 4. Enhanced self-awareness. Through mindful observation, individuals gain a clearer understanding of their thought patterns and behaviors. As we delve into mindfulness meditation, consider how incorporating these techniques into daily life can contribute to mental well-being and align with the broader goals of Buddha's philosophy. Let us now bridge the gap between philosophy and practical application by exploring how the Eightfold Path guides ethical conduct in our daily lives. The Eightfold Path serves as a moral compass, guiding us in making ethical decisions. Let's consider some practical examples. 1. Right speech in communication. Before speaking, ask yourself if your words are truthful, kind, and necessary. This practice fosters better communication and harmonious relationships. 2. Right action in daily choices. Consider the ethical implications of your actions, whether it's in your profession, personal life, or daily interactions. Right action encourages choices that promote well-being and avoid harm. 3. Evaluate your career in light of the principles of right livelihood. Ensure that your profession aligns with ethical standards and contributes positively to society. Ethical dilemmas and how Buddha's philosophy guides choices. Let's engage in thought exercises by examining real-life ethical dilemmas and applying the principles of the Eightfold Path. 1. Workplace ethics. Consider a scenario where an employee faces pressure to engage in unethical practices. How might the principles of right livelihood and right action guide their decision-making? 2. Relationship dynamics. Explore a situation where conflicts arise in personal relationships due to misunderstandings or harsh words. How could the principles of right speech and right understanding foster resolution? By delving into these case studies, we aim to deepen our understanding of how Buddha's teachings provide practical guidance for navigating the complexities of ethical decision-making in various aspects of our lives. As we conclude our exploration of the philosophy of Siddhartha Gautama Buddha, Let's recapitulate the key teachings and highlight their relevance in contemporary life. Summarize the essential concepts we've covered, emphasizing the significance of the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, Dependent Origination, Impermanence, and No Self in Understanding the Nature of Existence. Conclude by highlighting the enduring relevance of Buddha's philosophy in addressing the challenges of the modern world. Illustrate how the teachings offer practical guidance for cultivating mindfulness ethical conduct, and a profound understanding of the interconnected nature of our lives. With this, our journey through the philosophy of Siddhartha Gautama Buddha comes to a close. I hope this exploration has ignited a spark of contemplation and application in each of you. Thank you for your engagement, and may the wisdom of Buddha continue to illuminate your path. Recall the foundational principles that form the bedrock of Buddha's philosophy. The recognition of suffering, dukkha, Understanding the cause of suffering, Samudaya, the cessation of suffering, Niroda, and the Eightfold Path as the guide to achieving liberation. These teachings, rooted in wisdom and compassion, offer a transformative perspective on the nature of human existence. Consider how the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path serve as a compass in navigating the complexities of modern life. In an era marked by rapid change and constant challenges, Buddha's teachings provide a timeless framework for cultivating mindfulness, ethical conduct, and a deeper understanding of the interconnected nature of our world. As we part ways, may you carry the essence of Buddha's wisdom with you, integrating it into your daily life. Let the practice of mindfulness and ethical living be a guiding light, fostering not only personal well-being, but also contributing to the well-being of those around you. Thank you for your engagement and thoughtful participation. Until we meet again on the path of wisdom, be well and mindful.